more stuff. You need something to initiate right now. Because we don't have something like the Maokai for the side of Hung, who is coming in for Mark, by the way. That's one of the huge <laughs> changes that we've seen on the side of LNG. Um, there aren't that many dedicated go buttons. So banning out stuff like the Jax, which can flash in from the top lane and initiate. Something like the Shinsa, which can start things off at pretty much all stages of the game. That's very important. I almost wonder at this point whether we're going to get down towards something like, um, you know, Vise and other big, uh, maybe something like a Sichuani as well coming out later. We could even see the Maokai jungle being very high priority. That hasn't been banned out. And uh, that, that big change you were kind of mentioning too for Hung, I mean, he, he's been a tried and true piece for LNG. It was an experiment to try out for a mark, but uh, things didn't go their way. Also very curious to me is kind of how this second phase is going to work out with different priorities because got pretty much bot lane set. You're really looking at the play between Tian and Weiwei, two world-class junglers, to be the deciding factor. And who else do they leave right. the final pick to, the counter pick? It will be Tian. Right, so in a lot of regions, we see the Aatrox locked in, and some people look towards something like a Yone to counter pick it, but Yone has not been very good in the LPL. We've pretty much lost all of our Yone sides to the matchup versus the Aatrox. We might be seeing a Constellation kind of Gasante lock in. Look, you can lock it in. It just hasn't worked well in the LPL. We've seen people play both sides of the matchup in the same series and lose on the Yone to both sides. <laughs> it just hasn't worked well in the LPL. I am yet to see it really get the full value. If it can work, though, it is an engaging pick from the top lane, and these teams both need extra engage. That's very, very important, but there's a lot of uh, pressure now on Zerka to be the first LPL top lane to really get the most out of this matchup, alongside the brand now from Weiwei, which is a bit more of that long-range DPS. And the biggest thing is trying to combat some of the uh, standard way that they want to play for the brand. A lot of the farming Seen a lot of uh, conversation being done on what Tien wants to answer into this. Tien, one of our biggest brain pathers, I feel like, in the early game. He has a really good mindset of the jungle. He's a world champion for a reason. He's going to bring out his classic Lee Sin pick into the brand, and he's going to have to be a big difference maker in the early machinations of top esports. Yeah, hopefully he can pin back the brand into his own jungle to stop way to wait. Kind of just power clearing, getting grubs for free. And uh, just continually blitzing open the map with a loads of different gold advantages. Uh, neither team has fantastic engaged this game. Both teams have very good uh, champions at punishing people who are out of position. If you step out of position, you walk into a shockwave, or you walk into a Santa W, or just into range of Yone. On the other <laughs> side, the Aatrox can punish you from a flank. Same with the Lee Sin with the kicks as well. The Renata are flying over the top. Um, it is going to get bloody very, very quickly. The question is how you actually land that first blow. The engage is not going to be easy. It's going to rely on a lot of mechanical execution and a bit more tricky ways to work your way into fights. But both of these teams are ones that we have very high expectations of. Have they met those execution, um, those, those you know, thresholds, those expectations for top esports? Maybe you'd argue that. 369 has been an absolute monster. LNG, yeah. they have not. They have not found their feet just yet. This is a massive, massive whetstone to try and sharpen their edge. Trying to figure out if Hung can make the difference, if he can be that shot caller, at least direction leader for LNG. And as we get into it, I think a big focus for us today was Jackie Love and Gala, two guys who from so long ago find themselves to be the core puzzle pieces for their organization's top esports committing to Jackie Love long term here and now Gala finding a new home with LNG we saw these teams at high highs last year we'll see if they can continue that here game one kicks off between LNG and TES in LNG's home arena that is a heck of a skybox it's incredible every single time Let's see if we get ourselves some Gyos. Uh, oh, go. there they are. Okay, we got him. We oh got him. Oh my god! Okay. All right. Sometimes. Yeah! Scary. Yeah, okay, so sometimes, just for the record, folks, we don't always hear the Gyos because sometimes the crowd mics aren't completely turned on as we transition into game from the arena itself. So it's not they're just waiting. There's like, you gotta. You gotta, you gotta show us what you're cheering for, and they did. They absolutely did. They're awake. They're awake. They are ready. I am absolutely excited for this game. Um, LNG. I think it is right to put on the table the fact that they have struggled so far. They are two and four as a team with both the worlds, and for many people, um, myself included, um, they were the dark horse from the LPL for worlds last year. Now people won't be talking about them that way anymore because they struggled. Um, 
at least when they go in, went into the quarterfinals, got knocked out versus the one, and then it's the early split here as well after some roster changes came through. With Tarzan out. They really, really struggled. They would love to have a great early start into this game. They've got to be so, so careful though against Jakulov and Mako. Another big change in the LPL on two champions which can absolutely demolish the boss side. Yeah, I think another conversation is the fact that, you know, I didn't feel like there was much wrong with LNG last time around or last year. They went and got, you know, the world finalist jungler in way away. They just said, let's pick him up and see if he works with Scout. And we haven't seen that combo work out. Scout's had some really rough games. So you're looking to see, is this a proving point for them against yeah. the top team? Can they turn this ship around? The thing is, um, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of soul searching needed. LNG because um, way way for want of a better word is a gremlin style jungler he just kind of walks into the enemy jungle and makes a mess of things he is annoying gets in your face and he tracks you and gets value at the same time someone like Tarzan was a bit more of a planner he would be someone who'd link up with scout and say okay when you're on this wave wave three wave four we're going to walk into the enemy jungle you're going to be ready to assist me at this point he doesn't have his jungler here right now he's pushing in and this is what they've been lacking so far scout connected on but not going to burn his his flash, staying cool as a cucumber there. But the problem is now that you're below half HP, the severing bolt from um, Quay is going to get a huge amount of value because it has execution damage. Scout probably does need to back off and look for the wave to come into him. Because he wasn't connected well with what Weiwei was doing, it means that when he's pushed up too early in mid lane, uh, he loses a lot of his HP. Now he's going to lose a lot of pressure beyond that. Top esports. And Tien, who you just praised for the uh, early pathing that he's shown in the past two, gets some good value out of this mid-jungle 2v2. And I think for TES, you have to be proactive here with the composition you have. You need to get a, po a position where Jackie Love is ahead to really press that pressure up. And, and that is leading well for top esports, at least in that regard. But LNG on the other side, like, way, way full cleared. He's going back for another edition of it. And I, I feel like they're in fine position to have this game go long. Slowing things down from uh, that brief spout of action we saw in that mid lane. Um, one thing that we mentioned in the draft was how Yone is a counter pick into the Aatrox. It traditionally has been. Particularly now that we see more of the lethality Aatrox, though, it is a difficult counter pick to play. One that we haven't seen play out in the LPL that much. So I'm just going to keep an eye on that one. 369 has had some incredible performances so far. I think he's been one of the very best players in the entirety of the LPL so far. He picked up a cold the early laning phase, he's saying, okay, I'm just going to not look for the early brawling stats just now. Very much looking to see if Zucker can uh, stand his own versus one of the best performing top laners in the entirety of the LPL right now. Come out on top of a counter pick matchup, which hasn't really gotten that much value in this region so far. The dice have come home to top esports as uh, he makes his re-debut with them, but has just been monumental in the amount of pressure they can have. And that's why, you know, this team sitting at 4-1, and one, they are uh, uh, cut above, it feels like they're right. They, they brought Scott Green the first time we're seeing him with a, a kind of super team behind him, and uh, he's been able to fit in just like a puzzle piece. But I do want to focus in a little bit more on how Weiwei plays this map, because once you get to team fights, he really starts kicking up for them, and he needs to get the grubs early here, too. So Brands takes Grubs very, very quickly. We've described it a number of times now. You hit all your combo once to a single oh burst, no. once to a single Grub, but Mako's walking up. Mako, way, way missed the combo. I think Mako might die if he actually gets the combo off there, but he can't get the CC chain. Now Tien is going for an answer on a Zika in the top side. He still has five. Flash. The Soul Unbound, he's going to get the distance, but Tien closes that distance and closes the kill. First blood to TES. So, Yone first death on the board, no teleport, so loses some gold under that tower as well, put behind him. That's a bit awkward. 369 now going to find himself in an easier position. You don't even see a successful grub start from the side of LNG. There's going to be one secured by oh. a smite, but Tien. Weiwei got that grub. It does shield them, but it doesn't matter. Spiraling Despair, level 6 has been achieved. An explosion it goes off. Cream gets the second kill for top. You can see the intent from LNG. They run Gala up early, and they tried to get some value out of that and try and uh, burst down the grubs early, but top esports, they're in river early enough, and that missed combo now onto Mako may be very, very important. Really good hit combo onto Cream. The heal comes through just to get the distance, and Gala picks up the kill. Good pickup back on the other way. Scout on the Orianna. A little bit of a quiet early game after getting out traded very early on. Picture in picture, what happened here? So this is what's gonna be 
Oh, so that was a teleport towards bot side before the fight happened. Oh, oh it was a cancelled teleport. Okay, right, that makes more sense. I was wondering exactly why things went so hectic on the top side. But now what that meant is that Jackie Love now has had a lot of extra time on the bot side. It's taken a plate, taken a lot of CS, and top esports, they have very much won out of this early game so far. Definitely have. Uh this is not gonna hit the not gonna hit the Q sweet spots there. The face shield is available from Zika if he wants to play a little bit more safely. He's gonna just get traded down pretty heavily. Doesn't have the TP, so he's gonna be a little bit worse for wear there. Dragon is on the other side of the map. Haven't seen presence around that just yet, my man. No, it has really been about those grubs and once again we have um well, all of our series today, we've had some really quite um, dynamic early games. A lot of mo big movements back and forth. Okay, we'll to try and take that up. Like that. We finally see the dragon going down. As any time you play around a Callista in early game, you're winning around the Callista. Now the fact that Top East was, was played away from the Callista, won, then went moved back to where the Callista was on the bot side of the map to take dragon, and win there too, is uh, not so great news for LMG. And uh, the problem is, you'd be looking to see if Zucker could start taking off in this game as well. It's not been an easy start from him. Of course, he's not out of the game. He's even in CS. It's not the oh, worst yeah. thing ever. But once he starts hitting once two items, all eyes on this Yone to see if he can start making those plays really well. It'll be a uh, problem for future TES. Not a problem for present TES. Although, wait, wait. Trying to make it a problem right now, it feels like. We'll be spotted out by that. Tien will be there to respond in kind, and he actually has a really good angle here. Uh, so 369, he's look he was looking to set up a freeze. He held the wave just beforehand. That means that Weiwei goes up to respond. Tien goes to respond to Weiwei since he's on that side of the map. That's the flow shot of what happened in that top lane. The crash does go through, and Zucker ends up getting himself a re free recall at that point. One thing which I want to touch on as well is mm -hmm. Cream is a player we know for being an Akali player, for being a Silas player. He was kind of the, you know, uh, a lot of people refer to him as, the, you know, the Chinese Zeko because that's his, uh, how he won his world championship, you know, with those kind of champions. But Cream has been that player who likes playing the dynamic, mobile, but low-range players. Mages have been a bit of an Achilles heel from him for a while. Last year was a bit of a departure from him. He did grow a lot as a player. He played a couple more mages and now this year as well he's played an awful lot of Azir. Now has it been vintage cream solo carrying games with style and <laughs> pizzazz? No, I still prefer as a Kali, but it has been something. Now moving on to probably the most, you know, complex mage that League has in terms of the actual button inputs at least. In a, I mean maybe Rise is that. You know what, I'm not gonna stand by that. But into a complex mage, at least, like Quay. That's been quite a big change. <laughs> and the flash doesn't stop the recall. Not gonna get you the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love that, but not gonna find it. Although heads up play, pretty good to, to try to go for as well. Well, I do wonder now if we do actually continue to see the proactivity from Tien on the lead zone. I feel like it does still need to be the case here. You are actually at a pretty good advantage with Jackie Love in bottom lane. And they've yep. been able to play around that for a long while, it feels like, for top esports. Jackie Love has been on a redemption arc, it feels, for a while now. That's a really good point, too. That, one of the great things about this matchup is that every player on the map has pretty significant storylines behind it. Return of 369, you know, Scout trying to live up to his um, MVPs of last year. Jackie Love was absolutely insane last year. Um, he was a player and is a player who's famed for his less than wise decisions. Last year, it felt like he was still making Jackie Love plays, but he was timing them better. And he was still being a laning menace, a team fight carry. But that extra kind of killing edge wasn't being cutting the wrong way as much as it had done in previous years. I'm really excited to see how he does with Mako now, who of course left EDG. It's probably the best support which Jack Love has ever played with. They've had a good start to this season. Only lost against BLG in the very first series of the split. They took a game off of that too. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good now looking back at that in retrospect. Jackal upon the Callista. I want to see if he can snowball in the way that we sadly didn't see some of the Callistas earlier in the day. Managed to do so. And we haven't really gotten the focus down there at all yet. So there's no lead to speak of 11 minutes in. That could be a problem. Is now Weiwei steps in. TP's coming on the other side. That will be 369 joining. See if TS can get up to five grubbies. They're going to get to four. See if LNG actually gets in to deny it. <laughs> the Grub doesn't want to go back to its home. And we'll get the reset there. Weiwei going to get chunked out. Tien restarting it up and LNG moving in. 
Cream's got low mana. That's going to make it hard to actually fight to control that choke point. Tian has Q and he has the smite. He doesn't go for it. Says, okay, it's fine. We've already got the four. The void is denied a decent amount from someone like this Yone who might be hitting towers later into the game. Secured four across stars. Callista going to make good use of that, especially in the lane matchups. Jackalov has been put into. Has an awful lot of gold. Three plates, solo taken down towards that bot side. That's going to come back to bite for LNG at some point. So, no mites to be spawned this day. But that does not mean we get to rest on our laurels, Nymera, because Dragon is coming up very shortly, and we already see top esports moving down this way. And again, um, rule of thumb is if Callista's ahead and Callista's uh, getting getting bits done, um, you play around the Callista and she wins. It's harder to then always enable that. Whoa, big angle there with the hostile takeover. Gala's left out the dry, and Jackie Love is the one that picks it up. If you play towards the Callista, the Callista is going to absolutely hammer you. LNG, they had to be so careful around that side of the map. They didn't have eyes on everyone. Almost a nice mind game from Tien to avoid the shockwave. Dustin will end up getting caught by it. Still, LNG falling behind really quite far in this early game now. Top Esports going to maybe potentially even take down the top catch. <laughs> Had the handshake and everything. The Ren's not going to be enough. That's a tanky catfish, but they do press him off of the turret. And now the Dragon uh, Soul coming alive as the second one went over to Top Esports. With uh, the Chemtech Dragon, which is... Not the best you would have liked to have, uh, you know, any of the, well, most of the other ones, I think. It's not the worst one ever. You do have a lot of squishy members who potentially can uh, look to survive a low HP, like the, uh, the Lee Sin and the Aatrox that can kind of fly around this, but they're still not going to be particularly game changing. Um, this is why it was a real worry that top esports were winning away from the Callista, and now they get to play towards the Callista. The Callista's got a lot of solo gold, finally gets to bring that to bear. LNG get absolutely blown off the face <laughs> of the map in that bot side jungle. The LNG needed to be so much more respectful of this. And this is a bit of an issue we've seen with LNG. They've had a couple of times now where they've um, had early game plays where they've just, they, they know their own power spikes. They know the plays that they can make. And you know, right there, they had the center ult and the shockwave and whatever. They know their own power. They just don't realize what they're facing up against. A little bit unwise there. And that's going to put them into a more difficult position to fight back in mid game. Uh, I know the audience didn't get to see it, but we just got a little uh, stat down there that said uh, uh, TS have a 100% win rate when they get first turret, which is actually insane. Uh, it's, it's a pretty one-sided series they've had, I will say, and uh, that does mean it makes it a little bit easier to do so. But I think the biggest issue right now is that there is a timer, LNG, they love those team fights. We talked about some scaling aspects for them right now, but they're being pressed at the perfect times by top esports, and it's not letting them get a setup. And um, LNG, they are going to require a little bit of setup. Again, one of the things we talked about is they're not great engaged. You can hop forward, you can look for bits of damage, but it's really hard to get that big AoE engage in the way that a Maokai can or a number of our single target pick champions. Uh, you want Zerka to be in position, he wants to be pushing in a side lane after winning an individual fight and then looking to kind of enter a fight from, uh, from a flank angle. The flangle, we all belovedly call it here. Um, can he do that here? He doesn't quite have the items to be an absolute killer threat. He doesn't have something like Infinity Edge yet, but the Kraken Slayer is nasty damage on its own. LNG not in position to protect this Herald, though. He'll be waiting for another opportunity. LNG are positioned in mid lane, but there was a potential collapse by top esports. They're not going to find it in the end. He did end up getting the Rift Herald, though, so that'll be something for Tien to utilize. Looks like he's going to visit up top side too, and give a nice little hello to Zika. Was, uh, visited up there for the first kill of the game. Into that Yone. There's no one coming to help him. <laughs> rather, I there love is. That there is. just steps there. there. He's like, are you going to TP or not? <laughs> <laughs> it's a summoner for free. And this is quite important because one of the things that LG have been best at actually is Hung. He has Flash. He's going to be forced to blow it. He's got the handshake there. There's a lot of spears now, and it's Ooh. just Ooh. enough. Jackie Love! I guess it's not just X that marks the spot, it's Q as well. The pierce lands true 2-0. and oh. Jackulov on the Callista has been snowballing out of control now. You cannot let this Callista dictate the pace of this game if you are LNG. It's a big problem that they just had the teleport blown from Scout because normally what LNG do is have Scout alone in the side lane, hitting turrets and getting a huge amount of gold on something like an Azir or 
whatever else they can get him on. Now they've lost a huge amount of tower on this bot lane in a turret. They lost a kill in mid lane. Scout has no teleport. LNG's mid game plans are becoming much more difficult to structure now. Yes, almost got a tier two tower too in the bottom side with the combo of Kareem and Tian. Showing a little bit of the burst damage they can provide to those structures, but reset should come through. We'll take a look back at that one. Well, Dracula just hopping through the minions, gets one Ren's, uh, Ren set off of the minions. It's another one there too. CC comes in from Mako, hits with the last Q. Clean as you like. I love watching players' faces during those situations, just seeing what is going through their mindset right there. Literally, cool as ever, not even a care in the world. Pick that I one remember, um, I because rem it, it's Gala who's famous. So even when he gets pentakills, no reaction. Stone face. Just, 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 just the Ice Man. Jack loving Gala. Also, we talked about them. Look at Jack stats actually for a this one. So it's, uh, to see. Uh, these players have played an, a massive amount of story. Uh, the career games for Gala: 647. For Jack Love, 752. They've played each other 47 times, and they're pretty close in that too. They've, uh, they, they, currently the record is to Gala, 25 to 22. Both of these players have been around for a little while, and they've played an awful lot of games, both regionally and internationally. Two of our most uh, veteran talents at that point, and they are in a position of power in this game. Gala hasn't really had a chance to decide this one just yet. Though. Yeah, and looking for an engage on the scout, and they find it in the end. LNG make it out alive for now. The Ravid is small, not going to hit, and Tian in position of the dragon. This would be a third dragon for top esports. So this is where you start to see the problems with the lack of engage. The range from LNG allows them to kind of like poke some spears at top esports and see what they can get, but it's hard for them to land decisive blows on either side. So you've got to really see where that first CC lands. Tom W is very important. Tom Kench W is from out of vision. That can be pretty important too. Of course, if someone walks over a shockwave, that could be the absolute end of a team fight <laughs> before it even starts. 369 actually at that rate, not having flash and being in a very squishy build, that's a big loss for him. It makes it much harder for him to find an angle. Zucker walks up and starts uh, trying to throw his own weight around. Starting to get a little strong there with the Kraken Slayer too. He'll do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Jackie loves trying to find an entrance, keep this priority in mid lane. He doesn't want to step up just yet. And it's just a waiting game right now as 369 is working on a tier two tower. He's going to get that one for free. You can see that Zucker's walking down. It's a level down and there's an edge of night though on 369. It's not like he can really walk up for free. No fight over the dragon has yet erupted. Again, it's a bit of a fencing match. It's a chess match. Walk moving back and forth, keeping distance. Shockwave blown in mid lane. Pretty big ult to use there. Won't have it for this fight that's already getting started by Tien as he's going to pull the dragon out. Top esports have very much went out in this phase of the game. We get the dragon, we got a box here uh, to Turek. Oh. Even though Scout looks to try and get, get a catch onto Jakulov, the heal movement speed gets him out of range. So Scout trying to make that big play. But again, you don't have the Nocturne to be the borrow ball delivery. You don't have a Maokai. Much harder to make these plays work. And now without that shockwave, much harder to defend your turrets too. Scout went up towards top lane just to get the consolation for us of a wave pushed in there and get some more gold in pocket. But Top Esports are running this map right now. 369's got the World Ender popped here. He will get double TPs away from LNG as they will collapse on him. He can't get the damage, the absorb. And it's uh, just enough, at least for LNG, to pull something out of Magic Hat. Oh, it's a double teleport. That might come back to bite LNG, but as it stands, it's good gold in pocket. It's uh, an opportunity away from 369 to get himself ahead of the game too. The problem is, you have a Callista on the enemy team, and you've just used a lot of your globals, which means that if you go into side lanes now, Callista starts going onto Baron, and they already have map pressure elsewhere, that is going to be a huge, huge issue. See how Top Esports can make use of the global advantage. That is, a, I guess, a curious conversation to have, but I think the full frontal aggression that Top Esports are delivering right now is putting LNG on the back foot for a team that has had a lot of trouble putting the communicatory pieces together. We really have seen a continuation of that so far at least and a big factor to LNG last year to the success was guess who? The double season MVP in Scout and he has not found the same meshing with Weiwei and this team this year as he did last year. Yeah. As we said, it felt like it was a bit of soul searching needed for LNG. What team, what kind of team do they want to be? What kind of player does Weiwei need to be for this team? 
Han coming back in for Mark. It helps them kind of have a couple more pieces, which may restore some of the functionality of last year. It's like returning to an earlier save file. But actually, a large part of that was on following what Tarzan was doing on the map. They don't have that right now. And it feels like LNG, they don't really have that many players to do to make in general this game. But the ones they have made have just not quite been precise enough to deal with how top esports are controlling this map and controlling everything from the early game. The biggest conversation then becomes LNG have a good team fight. They have an angle. If they get a good big old five on five, that Weiwei and the rest of the company can actually do some serious Oh yeah, damage. nothing that a five-man shockwave fate seal no. combo seal, but good luck getting it. But Weiwei as well, right? Like in a position where they're in the Baron pit, that's where Weiwei thrives. Yeah. Uh, not right now though, as <laughs> he'll check in later. Uh, well, we'll see how quickly they get vision of this. They're going to probably have to call the teleport up from Zerka. He's backing off of the wave, recalling. They see them in River now. How it's quickly are they going to teleport in? What an angle are they going to get? That's a lot of Ren stacks. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just gone. And it's secured by Tien. In the end, TP's coming down, but that's way too late. Now Zika's oh, going to have to flash roof. out immediately. <laughs> have to flash out because the root from Quay was right on top of it. Scout. Scout. He goes in. Oh, my goodness. He got the over-the-top damage from Zika, but Top Esports will get out with the Fates call on the Mako. LNG just not quick enough to respond to the Baron. This was always the threat. Oh, as soon oh. as you end up blowing those globals, Things go from bad to worse, and that's going to be a, a catfish in hot water. Who gets out? Another one. <laughs> oh my god, he's just mind gaming them! Oh, what the hell? Oh my god! LNG just got duped in a half. Cream just broke every single one of their ankles, and the rest of the team came and chopped their heads off. TN! Finishing off Gala, he's gonna flash with the blast cone over, and he will get out, but my god, what a play from Cream. Well, I mean to borrow a phrase from old Zyrene. Top Eastwars just creamed all over them. He just teleports <laughs> in, has to flash out, but the full combo lands, and Huey's damage is through the roof. Cream, oh my word, huge value. He's, uh, I remember this is a player that we said, hey, mages aren't really his specialty. He hasn't had that much room to shine this game, but at least he gets that highlight reel to walk away with. And the entire time afterwards, like, Jackie Love was already working on the top in hip. They're going to get the in hip tower in mid lane as well. Hong's actually going to find an engage there. It's not too bad, but Tian wants to go right back in. He's got that, uh... Ooh, actually, Zika! Zika's in some trouble. Okay. They do get Zika out there. That was very close. He is not super tanky with this build. Did have this shield bow popped. But they're trying to delay some of the backs against top esports so they can't reset for the dragon. Uh, trying to see what random picks they could get. You know, that Q went a little further, further north. He could finish off a kill on his own right. I was really wondering there if there was any follow up after the CC landed on Dracula. What's happened here? Gala not really had the easiest game himself. Tien has yeah. been on an absolute stormer this Lee Sin. We've seen a couple of players pull it out to good effect so far. Lian had a fantastic game on it just earlier today. Tian, though, he's a player which you have big expectations of in the LPL. Had a bit of a difficult last year, starting off well, though, in 2024. So how much he can do in this one? Has no flash, has his ult back up. Can he find the priority target? He wants to go. Oh, Mako goes for the interesting angle on the hostile takeover. We'll have a little bit of uh, disagreeing entrances as he handshakes out of Cream's engaged there but uh he's dragon started up by top esports and it's burning real fast because jackie loves just standing yep. there like a turret 369 over the edge here lng they don't have the flank angle there's no flank on missile what are oh, they gonna do they but the there's shock a shockwave angle and you've got zika there but they can't do it they just don't have the damage Weiwei's getting knocked back at 369 is looking for blood jackie loves hop skipping away and he's looking like alice in wonderland right now Jackie Love comes up clutch. All of top esports throw their weight down into the face of LNG. Oh, for a second you thought LNG could smile, but if we're talking about Alice in Wonderland, it's a bit more like a Cheshire cat's grin. That one was not too pretty. Even with the Wombo combo, it doesn't catch enough people. And top esports control this game from beginning to Nexus Fall. They will go 1-0 in the series. A huge step forward for Top Esports and question mark pings abound for LNG continuously. This team cannot get it together and it's really 
a props to Top Esports who, you know, had the chance to have a really tough fought series in this one against LNG. Well, they came and handled business, and it came off the back of Tien. That incredible play from Cream as well. I think um, next draft, I need to see more obvious go buttons for the side, particularly of LNG, but I think both teams could use them a little bit. It was uh, a lot of kind of uh, beating around the bush because it was much harder to actually pull the trigger and go forward at the right time. I think Jackula really excelled, though, with the lack of engage and allowed him to play aggressively and play on the edge. He walked away with a heck of a lot of damage in that one game. Tien as well, fantastically Sin plays, but LNG, they need to set themselves up with extra ability to go forward and actually pull the trigger at the right time. Absolutely. We're going to see if they can do that in our next game as we step away.